yo, what is up, guys, and welcome to the Nerdy D Show. I am your host, the Notorious Nerdy D, alongside my amazing podcasting and life partner, the one and only Level Up, Lauren. What's up, y'all? Each and every week, me and Lauren will do what we basically do every day of our lives and discuss four random topics for your guys' enjoyment while you eavesdrop and chime in afterward in the comments. Every episode can be found for your viewing pleasure on YouTube. And if you don't feel like staring at our beautiful faces, you can listen on all podcast networks. The four topics will then be broken down and posted Monday through Thursday with complete episodes posting on Fridays with a bonus segment. So, Lauren, let's start off. Just let's kind of catch up what, what's been going on. What, how you doing? Super Bowl was last how you night. Doing? The Chiefs <laughs> won. We called it after basically the whole world said that the Eagles were going to win the Super Bowl. I am not going to lie. After Mahomes hurt his leg, I was like, let's go. It's over. He's nah, not gonna so you win. Can't, you can't There's be a fair no way. Fan. This was this is a learned house of Chiefs fans. Uh huh. Everybody in our house was cheering for the Chiefs. We had Chief cupcakes. We had good snacks. We had mm-hmm. we had chicken rings. Right. We did. We yes. did uh, White Castle burgers. I, White Castle chicken rings. You know what? That might be as close to White Castle as I might ever get. And. I'm okay with that. It, were they were they not? The I don't know. I got real suspect. sick afterwards. I've been so. to White Castle twice in my life. Once in Las Vegas and once in Detroit. Neither time was White Castle. And like I'm it was not terrible. gonna blame it on the White Castle. I mean, I liked it. It was good. Uh, yeah, I'm not like. And chicken rings are pretty good. Our dog liked them. <laughs> Our dog liked the chicken rings <laughs> more than I think we did. I don't think the kids ate them either. Uh, Rihanna did halftime. I I haven't watched I haven't it, yet, it yet, so I'm not gonna really comment on that. I'm what excited. else happened this last week? Oh, we found Mountain Dew. Pitch oh, Black. yeah, we did. After after our kind of our somebody journey, somebody told you, right? Somebody told me to go to the Dollar General, which is somewhere that I never go. Mm-hmm. Walk into the Dollar General. You talk about like someone. Someone at one point told me that the Mountain Dew Pitch Black was limited edition. I know where it is. It's all at the Dollar. They yeah. had cases on cases they had mountain dew uh like pitch black energy drink yeah there was they an had energy the drink. bottles the cans the three liters so like. we bought we bought a cold bottle while we were in the store mm-hmm. and then we bought a uh 12, 12 pack. pack of cans that we took home mm-hmm. uh tried the bottle in the car absolute garbage absolute like chemical water who someone said it tastes like grape soda. It didn't no. taste like grape soda. Yeah, I know it you didn't drink, but it tasted like MD 2020s from back I, in the day. I, I don't know what that is, but it tasted like gasoline. Like it yeah, was that's pretty it close tasted to it. like chemicals. Yeah. Like maybe grape chemicals is fair, but it, it like but I'm not a big Mountain Dew person in general, so I'm not but it like nah. It's not mm-hmm. like it's definitely a reason. I'm it's a big red and Dr. Like, Pepper person myself. Walmart and like Target aren't. I said, aren't nah, we'll pass on that, bro. We're good. Yeah, they, we're their good. taste testers were like, this is bullshit. We're not going to take this. <laughs> uh, oh, Lauren, so during the Super Bowl, there was a commercial. I don't know. You might have missed it for The Flash, new Flash movie, which I give two shits about. Uh-huh. Because I think the the guy who plays the Flash is allegedly a pervert or like Ew, some weird gross. little like creepy yeah. fuck. So I really don't care about that. But a thing I thought was exciting that I, hopefully anybody who saw it was was excited for you. Michael Keaton is back as Batman. I'm Batman. And Michael Keaton is is the one that you said the Penguin Batman that was yes, your favorite. He that is I, my favorite Batman. That I called Keither Suther- Sutherland. <laughs> So we, we it's about being so far off. Yeah. I mean, I, I sat there and said, oh, Batman's my favorite superhero. Keith or Sutherland played exactly. him. Exactly. Yeah, no, I was completely wrong. Someone someone tried to come at me in the comments with like, oh, you're, the amount of misinformation you have on Batman and he's your favorite. Yeah. That just shows how little I really give a shit about like yeah. superheroes. That's not yeah. my world. I like of Star Wars. Of your superheroes, he's the most important yeah, one. Of, of the superheroes, he's the one I like best. It doesn't mean I study or I'm a connoisseur of Batman. Batman I, I know a little bit about Batman. Yeah. I apparently don't know who played I him. I didn't in, know who was in the DC, in the MC, BC, UC universe. Yeah. So... Okay, and then last, I told you about this earlier, and I didn't want to spoil it, but this is a question that I had last night, completely random, so stupid, and, and I feel like it's only a question that you could answer, because okay. it feels like something that comes right out of your brain. This wonderful brain of mine. Okay. Question. Okay. Scissors. Like scissors. You know what scissors are, right? They used to cut things. Yeah. Why, is a, why are scissors called a pair of scissors? 
A pair of scissors. There's only one scissor. Well, because there's two choppers. Okay. But then it could be a pair of knives. a pair of choppers. Or a pair of blades. But when they're put together... One pair of scissors. But they don't become scissors until they're put together. So you can't have... If you have a pair of scissors, you have two Two sets of scissors. I'm in agreement with you. But I'm assuming that the scissor maker said, hey, we got... Two of these little choppers, let's put them together as a pair. But do you say give me a pair, pair of, of chopsticks? Um, yeah, I think it's called the one pair of chopsticks. Or do you just say give me the because chopsticks? Because on, pack, on the packaging it says one pair. Does it? So, yes, it does. It says one pair. But I guess, but, but that's not even a good argument because, because there's two chopsticks. Because if you lose one chopstick, you still have a chopstick. If your scissors break in half, well, you don't have scissors anymore. You have a knife. But you might have to go back. To I might have to like ask Bailey Sarian where did scissors come from, but I you just have to up. go and chop him. Like, have they always been like this? Yes. Who invented scissors? I didn't. I mean, I didn't study. I didn't write down Louis notes. C. K. But my but the point was, like, for something to be a pair. My question it, is, when the fuck did you think of scissors? I don't know because I was looking up for the, the for the casual wrestling show. I was trying to identify in my head when I was talking about Baron Corbin, him coming to the ring yeah. with, I couldn't think of what bolt cutters were. And it said a pair of bolt cutters. Yeah. And I'm like, well, why would he have two sets of bolt cutters? So maybe when they, but so I said, when they refer to something that has two parts, makes it a pair. But that's, that doesn't make sense because cutters. it's not a pair of. It doesn't become said thing until there's two of them. So that doesn't make well, it. Well, somebody had to decide that. So do I have a set of fingers? Yeah. Like, no, like it's, it's, it's a, a finger is a fucking <laughs> finger. I, I to don't have, know. To ha- it has to be able to stand alone to be a pair. If you break scissors in half. You have two swords. You no longer. Uh, so when you ask somebody like, can I have the scissors? Or you just say, can I have a pair of scissors? Can I have the scissors? I just say scissors. Well, yeah. yeah give me the scissors. Saying, Where like, are the scissors? I've, I've said in my life, give me a pair of scissors. But when you get like a school list of supplies, it says one pair I get of it. scissors. But then you should bring two scissors, two sets of scissors. Oh, mind blown. Let's get into topic number one here. All right. All right. All right. So last week we recast the WWE roster as DCEU characters. Yes. Uh, I thought that went over well. So I thought... This is a reoccurring topic. This is topic number one every week. We're going to recast something with WWE characters. So this week we're going to do uh, Disney characters recasted as WWE superstars. Okay, okay, I'm excited for this one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pre like I like to kind of pre-emphasize my thought process going into the 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 decisions I made, right? Because I'm not, I know you. I know mm-hmm. you, I know you, I live with you, I'm married to you, I love you, but your characters are going to be very based in a stereotypical world. <laughs> I like I could I could probably guess who they're going to be. Mm-hmm. And that's okay, you do you. I like to put I like to go a little one layer deeper. So while like looks definitely factored into maybe 25% of what I did, like or th- maybe let's say 33% were looks, I also wanted to take personality and kind of voice and mold it together. So some of my characters are a little bit left field. Let's say like they're a little out there, but I'll I'll defend them because I put down why I, uh, why I chose them. Now, as always, I had uh, six choice. Like, I think there was, did we do 10? Sure. I think we did five male characters and five uh, female characters just randomly. Uh, Number one, Simba. Who do you pick to replace Simba in the Lion King? I chose Seth freaking Rollins. Is it because he looks a little bit like a lion? Um, that probably in my mind, yes. He does look also, a little bit like a lion. It was because he has a very theatrical voice, and so I could foresee him being a good Simba because he'd be able to like play up the part and be very like. Oh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't want to be. A you, don't, hater. you don't hate on that shit. I don't want to be a hater. He's amazing. But I'm, but He's I'm a gonna great be a actor. hater because I. To me, Seth Rollins is a great hyena with his. <laughs> I don't see Seth Rollins like so. When you think of Simba, you think of like a strong, like charismatic, confident, right? Okay, well then, who did you pick? Jey Uso, like the young lion. Oh, that could 
work. Right? Yeah, like, I see that. If Roman Reigns is kind of Mufasa, damn. Then Jey Uso has got to be your Simba, right? There He's on the my combo. Mind, like, He's going to return. He's what? You, I did go totally serious. He looked like a lion. I don't think I even realized that. So How do you, does tell look me like you don't know me better than I know myself. He does look like a lion. But yeah, I think that Jey Uso kind of embodies the spirit of like a young lion, like a yeah. hungry young lion on the come up. You know, he's kind of going to get lost for a little bit here and then he's going to come back and reclaim his throne at some point. That was actually very good. You're like, like, I I'm like it. deep sometimes. Uh, you're real deep all I get the time. deep sometimes. <laughs> uh, Buzz Lightyear. Who do you okay, got for okay, Buzz okay. Lightyear? I'm deep. And then my next one is like extremely stereotypical. Baron Corbin. All right. Hit me with why. Because that's interesting. Didn't see it coming. So to me, Buzz Lightyear is kind of like goofy and like big. And I know I don't really know if he's bald, but in my mind, he's bald. So and yeah, so I don't know. I mean, he wears like the that purple head the purple thing. thing. So I guess hair wouldn't be relevant. Yeah. So I mean, hair didn't really play a part in it. But I could just see Baron Corbin, like Happy Corbin, being Buzz Lightyear. Something about him just reminded like me of him. I'm okay. I'm I'm okay with that. I think Thank it's better you, than the first. Sir. I did John Cena. This feels like John Cena's yeah, Buzz Lightyear, right? I could see that. Kind of like, you know, Mr. Like... You got some good Superhero, today. like... I like I, it. I mean, I, I thought deep and hard on this. I, I really wanted you to go, like, go in on it. So, that. yeah. I went, like, John Cena's kind of like... Buzz Lightyear was determined. He could fly <laughs> and things like... He had, like, his energy. Yeah. I feel like John Cena gives off some Buzz Lightyear type <laughs> energy. <laughs> That's why I went... energy. I went with, with John Cena. All right. So, here's... Okay. So, hold on. <laughs> so, it's Aladdin. I already know where you went with the most... <laughs> Stereotypical answer in the world. Uh, da, 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 da. Who Go do you think it. I picked? Mustafa Ali. I did pick him. He looks Ali. like Aladdin. <laughs> he looks like Aladdin. So I get, I, I get yeah. going with that choice, but that it's just it. like extremely stereotypical. <laughs> I went Ricochet. Okay. It just Ricochet feels like from an athletic standpoint, Aladdin had to like. I still don't know what from, he is. I looked well, it up, you know, tried to figure maybe, it out. I have no idea what the ethnicity it is. Maybe he's uh, Saudi Arabian like Aladdin. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, no, I don't, but I mean, I think to me. You know what? Aladdin jumps off buildings. Ricochet could jump off buildings. So that was my point. Was like when, when I think of Aladdin, I tried to break them down into like simple words. To, and, and I thought of like. Jumpy, flighty. Quick, uh, agile. And so it, it made me think that like Ricochet's quick, he's agile, quick thinker, kind of always on the move, moving around, bouncing around, Aladdin kind of, you know, he just married uh, the ring announcer girl, like that's his princess. Mm -hmm. That's his Bo Peep. That's, we're talking about Aladdin, uh, bro. Ah, yeah, yeah. All right, who do you got for Woody? <laughs> Clearly Toy I was on Story. the next, I was on the next subject in my mind. Yeah. Toy Story's Woody. <laughs> I picked Chad Gable. I think I might have originally had Chad Gable really? down, but I, I changed. I, I went just with, feel like I could put like a cowboy hat on him and some blue jeans and like the little. So vest. I think my pro my problem was he was too little. But Adam, Woody's kind of tall and gangly. I almost I think guess that so. your choice of Baron Corbin would have worked for Woody. Really? Over, uh, I went with Andre Chase from NXT, the Chase U guy. Oh, the one who got kicked out. No. The other one who's still there. He's still there. He's the leader okay, of Chase. Okay, okay, He's okay. kind of tall, gangly. Yes. Got some... Oh, the brown haired boy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is a good So I went good with choice. I went with him as Woody. Okay. But I'm fucking Let's up go here. Tarzan. Okay. Who do you got for Tarzan? Uh you know who do you think I picked? This is always uh, fun for me to Mad Cat Moss? I almost picked Mad that Cat Moss. That was almost where I went to. But guess who I picked? I have no clue. Rick Boogs, Ooh, motherfucker. He shaved his hair. Well, my Rick has hair. Old, old Rick Boogs. Old Rick Boogs, yes. That's funny because my, my Tarzan has no hair, but he's going to wear a wig. <laughs> Who is it? I went Braun Strowman. Braun, really? Yeah, I'm just going to go with like a You don't think he's giant, a little too big to yeah, be Yeah, but like Tarzan? I want my Tarzan to just like be like Wreck-It Ralph. Ooh. Damn. Braun Strowman, Wreck-It Ralph. That would have been a good, is, Omos is, is Wreck-It Ralph. Omos is not wreck and roll. <laughs> uh, Cinderella. Who do you have as Cinderella? Okay, so for my Cinderella, I picked Alexa Bliss. Interesting. I feel like a bl just blonde-haired Alexa Bliss is like a classic Cinderella. I went Becky Lynch. I could see that. Because Cinderella was kind of like, had a lot of like perseverance and tenacity and like, I think that kind of reflects more She's of Becky Lynch's cleaning. person. <laughs> good at cleaning. Yeah. Uh, Ariel. Who do you got for Ariel? Scarlet. From from a look standpoint, mm -hmm. I think that really works. That's what I, I was. went Charlotte Flair. Okay, 
Charlotte Flair, I, I think, like, she kind of is regal, and I think of, like, natural, like, mm-hmm. like elegant. Like, I, I don't know why. I just saw Charlotte Flair as Ariel for some reason. I think, like, a lot of times Charlotte wears outfits that are, like, peacock-themed, which yeah. they kind of, like, have the same color like scheme as, as okay. Mermaid. For some okay. reason, like, Charlotte Flair is what I saw when I saw Ariel. Yeah, I'm going to say no on that one, How about but okay. Belle? I picked Emma. Once again, from a look standpoint, I think that that works. Yeah. 100%. And she's kind of like, to me, Belle was always a little bit in the clouds, but still kind of intelligent. I'm going to assume Emma's intelligent, but she always seems a little flighty to me. Her character has always been ditzy, but I would assume she's an intelligent uh, girl. I put, and I know this isn't really WWE, but I put Sasha Banks as Belle. Okay. Like I'm just going going out there at some point. Like, okay. And going way off the end. And I did it because of like intelligence and like determination. Those were the words that like came up to me. And so I okay. thought like Sasha Banks and, and I may be way off on that one. That may be way off, but that's what I that's what I chose. All right. Rapunzel. Um I picked Ronda Rousey. I feel like I could just put a blonde wig on Wanda Rousey, but like Rapunzel was kind of a badass. She like I had agree. a fucking pan was gonna hit somebody with it. Yeah, Wanda Rousey was a good choice. I chose Maurice only because she hits people with a purse, <laughs> and, and because Rapunzel and that hits people with you a of frying that, pan. That's funny. So that's why I chose. Like that was there was no deep thought put into that. You one. I thought of that like one. Okay. Rapunzel hitting people with things. I thought Maurice hits people with things. Like Maurice has lot. long hair. Jasmine. Indy Hartwell. Ooh. She was the first one that, like, I was like, damn. Ooh, I'm not mad her. at that. I'm not She's mad at that. She's supposed to be. I went that Bailey. Role. Just based off, like, Bailey, like, and, and this is going to the old Bailey, but, like, having kind of, like, a fun-loving, but, like, strong, independent kind of vibe. What's up? What are you going to say? Say something. Bailey should be one of the fairies, the blue fairy. From the like fairy godmother, <laughs> the blue fairy, not the one from Cinderella. Which one? But uh, which one is it? Um, is it Snow White or one of no? Sleeping Beauty has three fairies that visit her, and one of them is a blue fairy, and Bailey is the blue fairy. I'm gonna have to look this up. Is there like a deeper reason for this? <laughs> you might laugh like at this, and some people might hate me for it. I'll have to look okay. it up. I'll put it maybe in the episode. Yeah. But. So I have a random one. So so I was gonna ask, do you have any extras? Ursula. Okay. Who's your Dewdrop. Ursula? You were putting Dewdrop, right? <laughs> I had Alexa Bliss's Dewdrop, uh, Ursula. Yes, Dewdrop was going to be mine. <laughs> no, I had... I mean, you're fucked up. You're fucked up. Uh, Who did I have? I had, uh, I had Seth Rollins as Scar. I was going to ask you what you thought of Scar. I had Seth Rollins as Scar. Okay, this is my favorite prince of all princes, Prince Eric. Who do you have as Prince Eric? Who would you choose as Prince Eric? Austin Theory. That's a good one. He's got that classic, kind of classic like, prince. Like, yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, I had Hades, the Undertaker. Oh, that's a good one. I had uh, Gaston. Oh, guess Gaston. Mm, that one for me would have to be, uh, what's his name? Bobby Lashley. Oh, I like that. Right? Mr. Bobby Bill Lashley is, is Gaston? Yeah. I, like, I, like, I thought that was a, a That is a good, good one. one. That is a good one. I, like I had uh, also... I had Captain Hook as Seth Rollins. Okay. You know who actually Bailey would make a good one as? Oh. Snow White. True. I guess I didn't even think she about She would that. have been a good Snow White or the Blue Godmother. Yeah. So. And then I had the Evil Queen. I had Ronda Rousey. Oh. Just because she kind of gives off those vibes. That's Queen true. of Hearts. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Queen Zelina. Natalia. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> Did you just say Queen Zelina? I had Queen Zelina as somebody, and I forgot. So her. I almost I her put her as, as Ariel. I almost put her as Ariel. I had honestly, her as Jasmine. For but then I, I think it, I was like, Nah, I'm going to change that. All right, so we'll have to figure out another good one to do next week. I'm I think sure we should figure. recast a movie. Okay, you want to recast next week? We'll do a movie. For, yeah. for topic one. All right, Lauren, topic number two. So okay. I had uh, I had planned all week on doing a topic strictly on AI okay. with the whole like chat GPT thing that's going around and like everybody using it to replace marketing and like write podcasts for them and, and do all that stuff. 
So I, I wanted to talk about that and like all the crazy shit robots were doing. But then all of a sudden we turn on the news and we're shooting down spaceships left and right. We shot down three spaceships that we don't know what they are and one balloon. Okay. So I thought uh, it led me down a different line of, of thinking when I wanted to come up with this topic for topic number two. And that was, do you think what happens first? Is there an actual alien invasion on planet Earth? Or does artificial intelligence start to rise up and take over the planet? Like, what what will be the first thing that happens? So, I think that if there's aliens, they would already come and fucked with us. Um, and they, who knows? There might be aliens. They might just be using us for something. We don't know. But... I think it's going to be AI. I think that they're going to go so fucking deep in this shit that eventually it's going to learn from, like, we are going to be part of fucking iRobot. I agree. You, I mean, is so what I believe. I wrote down, I mean, so I see how you answer is a quick, uh, I have an extensive report I did on this. Yeah. Oh, I didn't do an extensive report. I, mean, like like, like, I just go straight to Would you like me to get, so let's start off. I want to make an argument. Okay. Let's start off, let's, let, and I'm not making, I'm making playing devil's advocate a little bit. Okay. Let's okay. make an argument for an alien invasion. Okay. Because I went down a fucking rabbit hole, Lauren. Okay. I fell down last night. All right. I was up to like three in the morning researching aliens All right. and robots. Okay. And just really trying to feel like there's Give a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit going on that we don't know about. It's like, like there's some scary shit. All right. So Tell let's me. kind of, I'm going to go down your line of thinking, right? There has to be life out there somewhere. Yeah. Right. I mean, as big as yeah. like, as these big brain scientists tell us that the, the universe is infinite. There has to be somewhere, somehow, there has at least tiny worms, something exists somewhere, okay? Mm -hmm. Right? But how likely is it that aliens ever actually, like, if, if the universe is as big as they say it is, how likely is it that they find we're a speck of dust? How, how like, did, okay, so I read this. I went in and found this information. Did you know that the next theoretical planet, this is all theory, that could house life that is close enough to a star that is like the sun is 4.2 light years away. Okay. That doesn't sound like much, right? At the current speed, a rocket ship can travel. That's, it would take us 6,300 years to get there. Oh my God. How old is the earth? I don't know how old the earth is. I think that's a debate, right? Yeah. Okay. First question. How do they theorize shit, right? We can't fucking go to Mars. No, we can't go to Mars and we're theorizing shit. That's 6,300 years away. Like, I don't like, I don't understand that shit. So this is, you know, this is the theory that gets behind aliens. Another question for you. Were you aware that we've landed on Venus? No. Like that doesn't seem like regular information that's, that's handed when out. When did school. that happen? So apparently Russia has been there numerous times, whether that's bullshit or not, who knows? But we've landed like like people or just no, like things. just like machines like satellites or rovers. We've landed them on Venus. And the longest that one has ever lasted is 110 minutes because they immediately burn up. Oh, shit. But I didn't know we'd been to fucking Venus. No. Like, like how much shit do we not know? Or are we not told? I believe you, there's a lot of shit. That let we're me not ask told. you this. And this, I know we're getting off topic here, but this was just like the rabbit hole I went down. Did you know we have a satellite in space that is 6.5 billion miles from the Earth? No. Bro, I can't get reception <laughs> on my phone and I'm on the planet. And we're communicating with something that it's going 39,000 miles per hour. That's crazy. What the fuck? Like, I, I how does it communicate with us, though? When it's six point five, I don't billion. know. Like I don't know. This is just, and and I could be on complete bullshit websites doing research, but yeah. this is information that I found that like was like on NASA and like NASA affiliated websites. That's All crazy. this information, like, so we're out here. Like I think it's farther than like it's still within the sun's gravitational pull, but it's like outside of like planetary some orbit. So yeah, I don't know, man. Like, but so you literally telling me that that aliens have traveled fucking like this is the number they'd have to travel 24 trillion 690 billion 120 miles you're telling me they've traveled that fucking far to come to earth and we're shooting mavericks out here shooting them down in f-16s <laughs> no like i'm with you on the fact no. that like I, I, don't, I don't, even if aliens exist, I just think we're too insignificant for them to even give a shit. About. That's what I think. There's like, but the fact that all that stuff, 
is 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 in space is just it's fucking wild right but let's talk about ai okay. it's here yeah like we've we've fucked around with the with the chat gpt we use it for our businesses yeah. it, it is here and it is scary what well it can you've do. seen also like what people can do as far as like what is it the deep fake technology i mean that's um, that's not really world. that's not really ai but but i yes but like also being able to like they create robots now oh, that look like humans. So I'm getting into this. I'm getting. Have you seen the the dog like bomb robots? Like there's like bomb oh. sniffing dog robots that like. Mm. Is it the things that like are on all yes, four yes. and they can fucking shoot machine the ones guns that were and just shit? Teasing us and dancing at the Super Bowl for some reason. Yeah, with with Jason Derulo. That's exactly the first thing that popped in my head. Me Maybe. too. I said those are the ones that just all of a sudden go. Yeah, like what if those guys decide they don't want Jason Derulo on the stage anymore and they kick his ass off? But like, no, you've seen those like dogs, and then so then there's a robot I saw this guy who created basically a human robot that he says is going to replace like receptionist. Because it can greet, it can like it, it's a source of information. It'll be able to point you in the right direction. And this dude's saying that like within the next four to five years, this is a viable solution. You talk about like, and I don't know, like I don't think that when I talk about and this is getting a little more serious, but like AI taking over the world, they're just gonna make people obsolete. I don't think it may yeah. it doesn't even really have to it never has to come to like cognizance, but like marketing we know from a marketing standpoint that like chat gpt has basically eliminated eliminated the need for like a copywriter or a marketer it does all of that for you yeah and so it, like if it takes the job of receptionist what if it takes like what if it gets into the medical fields and it can start doing surgery mm -hmm. and th like things like that are insane but like like there's vr you put these headsets on there's fucking sex robots like at a certain point these weird dudes there's are gonna VR be out here. sex robots so there's at this point there's gonna be like guys out here just like oh no 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 there's a whole subculture no, no. with like there's robots. a whole subculture of them i've seen it is it and isn't there like a movie about a guy who like falls in love with his phone uh, yeah, with his computer or something no, like that. No, I think it's his phone or something. Oh, it's Joaquin Phoenix or I something. I don't know. But also, if I think it was on like My Strange Addiction, there are people who are like married to inanimate objects. So just imagine. I mean, once the motherfuckers can make you a sandwich, huh? Well, I mean, like, so in a relation. Oh, yeah. You know, well, I'm sure they could do that too. But like, some people just are looking for like connection. And if that computer or whatever I, can man. give that to them so i know that there's they apps. got a hand i know that like i've seen <laughs> commercials for apps on the phone of like ai companion like you can they, yeah like they will text you throughout the day and ask you mm -hmm. how you're like that shit is fucking wild but my four biggest fears with, <laughs> with ai bless you, excuse me are ai powered soldiers yeah it gets scary when you start weaponizing like robots to me that that's scary well, because what happens if they malfunction? Well, and not just that, like war, a little bit of war. I think there's, there's a human component to like having to kill somebody, but mm -hmm. how, I don't know the exact word I'm like, but how like there's a lack of compassion when you can just send robots to go do it. Yeah. You know, well, because just, you take accountability out of it too, though. So it's the same way with like drones, right? Like used to, I know that like people who would drop bombs or missiles mm -hmm. would need like intense therapy afterwards because mm -hmm. you kill there's repercussions for what you did right yeah but with like a drone or something it who nobody's to blame the drone did it but what happens when the drone or, or the ai drops it on the wrong person that's, so that's right the who has thing. the accountability so Who's responsible the next problem for i have my next fear is super intelligent ai what happens when ai starts to believe that it doesn't need input that, like it that's can, the it scary can, part to me. Like what happens when like, like I know better than you or like we program a drone and they're like, well, maybe you're the problem. No, I agree. I'm going to drop the bomb on you because you're creating violence with something like that. That reminds me of like every scary movie where they're like, it finally turned on them because I forgot which what I was watching, but basically the movie was about that where then they said, Oh no, I have to kill all these people because if I kill all these people, then we're going to be able to save our planet and, and like, I guess, save our resources yeah. so that these people yes. can live. So th that's the next thing. Bias, AI bias. Like what happens when the AI takes on a point of view that doesn't line it. So like right now we believe in, there's like humanity, right? Like uh -huh. what you're saying, like 
sometimes it is better to do something that is stupid that benefits a lot of people. Yeah. But AI may just come to the thing of like, no, you should let a thousand people die. Yes. It will overall better the air quality or something like that. Yeah. The last thing I have though written down is cyber attack. Like AI is in every computer now. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's used chat GPT, it's, it's like, it's interconnected. So like, is it really, well, it, it has to be because it's, it's on the internet. So think yeah. about like you signed in, you used, it can, it can get in interweave into your computer. So like, you got to think that like what happens when it doesn't need a physical body, it could just shut off the power. Yeah. That's crazy. When it, you know, when it decides it could like those kind of attacks are scary. It could start sending information to other people. What just shit like that. I think that there's like there's good shit that can come from it, yeah. like Neuralink and things like that. But like to me, I I think that we are. I saw scientists say that we're like twenty, we're twenty years away from humans and robots living like in a symbiotic. Like your kids, kids will. I don't know how I have feel robotic about friends. That. That's it's wild, right? Like, I mean, I don't think I'm a fan of that, honestly. Well, I, th- I mean, I, the problem is, is every movie and, and, and like... That's every- what I'm saying. I feel like like we are just setting ourselves up for a disaster. And, and I'm with you on this idea of like, the problem is, is without like human thinking, like I tend to think that humans have gone too far to one side, but like yeah. robots will go completely back the other way. Yeah. They'll think completely practical and, and... So you and I were talking about it the other day, how there's parts of the world and civilizations that have not been exposed to any technology, right? So is it that our civilized, or what are they called, first world countries? I don't even know what they're called. Mm-hmm. But like the ones who have access to all of this, are we going to end up just destroying ourselves? And the ones who... Aren't? Oh, you don't think those robots are going to go show up on that island and whip those people's ass too? I don't know, right? <sighs> it's wild, man. All right, Lauren, topic number three, a little less, a little more lighthearted. Let's get off of the alien invasions. Kind of spook myself. There. Yeah. Uh, topic three. So I was scanning BuzzFeed for our weekly kind of, you know, Topic three, if people don't know, it's typically kind of food related or Yum. or like a little more out there. And I found this week an article on BuzzFeed that was the 21 best budget foods to make when you're broke. Okay, okay. Which is fun because we've all been broke. So we all have probably, I want to go through this list. I thought it'd be fun to go through this list with you. We've both been in college and had to, to rough it out. Okay. I want to see if, if you've eaten any of these things. There, So there's 21. I removed like seven of them because they were a little bit redundant. It was people making basically the same thing with like maybe one different ingredient. So I've got 14 items okay. on this list. So let's talk about it. Let's see. go. Okay. Number one. This is the classic. It's a little different than the way I know it, but it's buttered elbow macaroni with pepper, with cracked pepper. So... Fun fact, I had never had butter noodles in my life until you. I, that may be a white people thing. I think so. I butter, never, just straight, like, ever. My whole life we ate, and I don't know if it was for being on a budget or just because they taste it's amazing. It's easy as fuck. But like, it's so good. I love uh, buttered noodles with... Yeah. With uh, So yes, I've had it as I an adult salt. with you. I don't you. do pepper. Yeah, salt. But, I'm a salt person. But I, I, so it's interesting. I think I want to go try and do butter with buttered noodles with cracked pepper. I don't think I love pepper though, so. I do. I am a fan of pepper. All right, number two, a tomato sandwich with mayo. So when they're saying this, this is just two pieces of bread, tomatoes mm. and mayo. Have you done this? Fuck yeah. You, so you've done a straight yes. up tomato sandwich with mayo? It's delicious. No. I love mayo. No. I love mayo. So like before you, I would literally like make a sandwich, of course, with bologna and just like a slather of mayo. But I have done just tomato and mayo. That doesn't feel like two things. So I've the, the my BLT, sandwich experiments, a BLT. So it's it's like you don't have the money for the bacon. The bacon. So you make just the just bread the and tomato. tomato, the BT. I so I used to take like plain potato chips and put them between two pieces of bread and do a chip sandwich. That sounds good. I ate chip sandwiches, but I never would eat a uh, tomato sandwich with mayo. Number three, you ready? Mm -hmm. This seems like this is from uh, your neck of the woods. Okay. I don't even know if I can say it. It's A R R O Z caldo, arroz caldo. Arroz caldo. It's just chicken soup. So this is a piece of chicken Mm -hmm. boiled down, then shredded. 
and then you throw the bone back into the broth, and you add a combination of sticky rice and normal rice with a couple of eggs. Yeah, we ate that as kids. You ate like it felt yeah. like that was something that you probably. We ate. just call it uh, chicken and rice, though. Really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, like chicken just, rice soup. But but that is a thing. Yes. I don't. Th- I never ate that. Yeah. That, that's interesting. It's good. Uh, this is one that I've eaten. All right, number okay. four, Ritz crackers and peanut butter. Yeah, like I do that, that still like to a, this day. Like an afternoon snack. Yeah, like I'll still do. It says crunchy peanut butter. Or I've never with cream done cheese. I don't. I'm not. I've never been a huge fan of crunchy peanut butter, but I think the cracker provides all the like crunch that I need. I don't need the peanut butter. Cream competing. cheese and Ritz crackers. That's delicious. I like. So like I like to take a plate and put a, like a nice spread of. Uh-huh. It's crackers and a drop of peanut butter. Yeah. And then if I'm feeling fancy, a little bit of jelly. And nice. Grape or strawberry? Uh, grape. Grape with crackers. Strawberry with sandwich. Okay. But, but grape, with, uh, grape with crackers. Number five, a stir fried steak with ramen noodles. Um, this feels mm. like more of a, a probably an Asian culture thing. Yeah, I've never had that. Because ramen noodles, besides, I mean, I, and I think. With I this mean, I is, eat just ramen. I mean, this is referring to like legitimate ramen noodles and not the fucking package of ramen noodles. Oh, I've, I only eat the packaged ones. Yeah, it's me too. But I never put meat in them. I, no. I think that's interesting. That's fancy. Uh, egg drop pastina. No. Is okay, that what you so, make us? The egg drop pastina? I don't soup? know. No, no. This is, this guy says, I don't know what my grandmother called it. And it's not cheap now because <clears throat> eggs have gone up in or price. Seven fucking million but it's dollars. Chicken broth with star pastas, Parmesan cheese, and egg. So it's it's close to like a true that like actually, an egg should, drop that soup. Good. It does sound pretty good actually. I like Parmesan. cheese. I think cheese. I could do that. Poached eggs on buttered toast. No, because I only eat eggs one way, and that's yeah, I don't even scrambled know what a and egg hard. Is. No, and that's no, it. we've started eating eggs. Oh, a fried over hard, over hard, over, over hard. hard. I like them over hard. We like our eggs over hard. I don't like any juice in them. Yeah. A grilled cheese with Campbell's tomato soup. Fuck yeah. That's just like a Wednesday, bro. That's, That's like solid dinner. Yeah. You tell me, like, you tell me we're coming home and having grilled, grilled cheese, cheese and tomato, and tomato soup. soup. Fuck yeah. Yeah, it's like a cold, like a winter night. Uh-huh. I'm doing that. That's, I'm excited. That ain't broke people's Mm-mm. food. That's, that's legit right there. Potato chip omelet. The fuck is a potato chip omelet? Have you ever done a omelet? potato chip omelet? So you buy potato chips, salted potato chips, beat up some eggs, mash them together with a fork, add olive oil, and that's it. Oh, okay. So I guess it's like a potato omelet. But yeah. With you don't have enough money for potatoes. But are chips? No, you know what? Than potatoes? You know what's so fucked up? All these struggle mills are from like back in the day. Oh, I'm sure. Chips are like seven fucking dollars yeah. now. And yeah. eggs are like, I went to the store today and it was $7 for like a half dozen. All right. So this guy says baby pizzas. Uh-huh. He takes oh, he takes his leftover hot dog buns, spreads them on half, puts butter. Okay. Garlic powder. Okay. Spaghetti sauce. Mm-hmm. Shredded cheese. Two slices of pepperoni. Throws them in an oven. That sounds amazing. He folds them up. That, sounds that actually good. sounds good. Mine is, yeah. I can't do garlic powder. But. We'll see like. We never bought hot dog buns as kids. So y'all ate it on bread? You just got the bread. I don't eat hot dogs, so I never had that issue. I love hot, hot dogs. I used to eat cold hot dogs, which is so gross. I'd mm-hmm. peel the skin off and eat that first. It makes me so disgusted now, but I loved it as a kid. <sighs> Number 11, cinnamon sugar toast. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. That was like an everyday Monday morning thing. Yeah. Sunday, I, Monday, I, Tuesday, know, Wednesday, I didn't Thursday. know we were doing that because of a budget. I thought we no. were just doing that because that was that was good. It was a good ass cinnamon yeah. roll. Uh, number 12, a fried bologna sandwich. Uh, yes. Oh, my God. I don't know. What fried is a fried bologna. bologna sandwich? Okay, so you have to like bologna, but, like, you literally just get the bologna and you fry it, and it gives it a whole different taste. Okay. And then you put it in a sandwich. It's delicious. I'd still eat that, except none me. of y'all eat bologna, so. Have you ever heard of a brown sugar sandwich? No. This was one that I thought we might have to go try. No, but what is it? So you take cheap white bread, take a spoonful of brown sugar. Mm-hmm. And if you really want to get fancy, you put applesauce on it. Okay. And you toast it like a grilled cheese. Okay. And then you eat it. That sounds really good. It probably like caramelizes yeah. and is like so good. It sounds like like it's like cinnamon sugar toast, but like elevated. That's fancy stuff. Then this was the last one. And okay. I saved it for last because I, I want to talk to you about this. Mm-hmm. This guy said confetti pasta. Okay. Confetti pasta. Basically, I beat up a couple of eggs with salt, thyme, plenty of black pepper, 
Then I fry the mixture like a pancake so it becomes crispy on both sides. Then I cut it into ribbons and combine the ribbons of pasta with things like Parmesan, a handful of frozen peas and spinach, uh, or also tomatoes. I, if I could afford olives and red pepper flakes, garlic, and maybe pesto Parmesan. Is this guy fucking Gordon Ramsay? Yeah, that sounds real fancy. Like, like he's got all sorts of ingredients. This guy didn't understand the fucking assignment when we were talking about, this is a full, no. like, this is a five-star Michelin restaurant meal. Yeah. Some if, struggle meals, I would consider. Struggle meals, if you're, if you're having to use time, <laughs> if you're going into the cabinet time. and getting time, you're not struggling, yeah. okay? Black pepper, fry Olives. it up into a pancake, then cut it into ribbons. Bro, who's cutting into ribbons? If you have that kind of time, like, that's why you're broke, bro. Yeah. Like, I thought that was funny. Did Okay, so I wanted to end this topic with, do you have any, uh, like, of your own Oh, struggles? fuck yeah. What's your, like, I, I, we ate ketchup bread. It's where you got bread and you just put ketchup on it. Okay. Okay. Um, Ooh. Eggs that's, and wieners. That's horrible. Like just eggs and wieners, like eggs so with like hot dog like wieners. Scrambled eggs with wieners inside of it. Yeah. Okay. Like that was like an all the time thing. Rice and beans, of course. Rice like and beans. All the time. Yeah. Like everything with some, some, some rice and beans. Picadillo, which to me, I just like the way it tastes, but okay. it makes sense. Like you can take one pound of ground beef and then like turn it into like three. Actually, I don't think of those as struggle meals because those are still things um, I made today when I'm just hungry. Yeah, we ate a lot of eggs ketchup growing up. Ketchup bread is interesting. It was good. It was good. Like ketchup bread, like just bread and ketchup. I've graced you once with my uh, Dorito nachos. Oh, those were delicious. Dorito nachos are next level. You take nacho cheese, Doritos, and sprinkle cheddar cheese and microwave those, yeah. those motherfuckers for about 30 well, seconds. Well, speaking of this, I had told you, I'd asked you, like, did you have snacks as a kid? Like, were there just snacks in your house? Yes, we did. You said snacks. yes. And I said, there wasn't in mind. I TikTok told me I lived in an ingredient house, and You're that was an like house. No, where we, you just had a bunch of stuff to make. We things. had snacks. We had like rice crispy. Now it was a fucking fanfare like day. If you got the fruit roll ups, the gushers. If you got to have the mini bags of like you know chip bags, that was a fancy day for us. We didn't have mini chips. We would have big bags of chips. We were just I was pretty respectful of the. We I wasn't soda, a big though. snacker, so I didn't go in and like Pop eat charts. all the snacks like our kids. Pop our charts. kids or like garbage disposals. Yeah. But those are some of the ones that I can remember. Cool, cool. All right. Topic number four, Lauren. Topic number four is going to start being a kind of nerd culture or video gaming topic. And I thought the fitting way of kind of starting this segment that's going to be reoccurring was to go with what is your favorite video game of all time? All time. You go from, from the day you were born to yesterday. Just one? or No, no. I want a list. I want your favorite okay. video games okay. of all time. So, my favorite video. Burnout. How did you know? Because I know you. I fucking love, but it's only Burnout Revenge. Like, that is my ultimate favorite thing because it's all the things I'm great at. We finally got, no, we never got to play Revenge. Yeah, we never revenge, got, yeah, right? we never we got to play, play Paradise. Paradise, and it's not the same. Which is, I, I will tell you, it's not a game that I enjoyed. I, it is a I love it. game of chaos. Exactly. You get to crash cars and like, I just beat the shit out of you and I fucking that loved means, it like, and it was amazing. Every video game we play, I typically... Like, I mean, look, Dominating. I'm the Roman reigns of video games in this house. I yes, smash which is right. going to lead into my next one. Uh, okay. But hold on. Let's, I want to finish on Burnout. Burnout was the one game that I, like, you left the room and I kept playing and I could not I'm a fucking burnout champion. grasp. I never could grasp what the game, you just want me to keep flipping this car. Yeah. And just keep, like, what is, yeah. why is this You got to cause as much damage as possible. Okay. So I what loved it. What, what's your other favorite game? So, if you had asked me before last week when we played it, it would have been GoldenEye. Because in my mind, I was the GoldenEye champion. And I was so amazing oh. at it. Until. We played GoldenEye. Yes. 25 to nothing. Exactly. So I, murder. So I was so excited for GoldenEye to come back out on Nintendo <laughs> so Switch. So was I. And then nobody will play it with me. I just, I mean, I just. It's mean, not fun when you don't even get to hit you once, okay? I don't know what to tell you about that. Um. Another one would be Mario Party. Like, I love Mario Party. I was so happy to see that it came back out on... I'm not a fan of Mario Party because I, I don't like it. games that uh, 
Mario Kart does the same thing. That try to balance the skill level. Oh, I so don't like, even, like Mario Party does this thing where like no matter who's the best, at the end there's this weird like random chance that the they gift you star. stars that, yeah. that put you in first place. So I don't love like I enjoy the the I enjoy and I don't know if there's a way to turn that off. I enjoy the mini games Me too. of Mario Party. That's my favorite part. And but I, I liked, don't like how the like. But the, I liked for that version, structure. you were able to actually only play the mini games. That's why that was mm. my favorite one. I like that. I and then that. to round it off, another one is Tetris, though, which apparently I found out that you're the champion of that, too. And I'm not as good as I thought I was with that either. So we, in context, we, all of these new games are not new games, but all of these games, the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance yes. came to Nintendo Switch. And so we were playing. We went to go play them. Tetris and, and some of these you games. You dominated and, me. And yeah, I didn't have a chance at never, all. Never lost Tetris. I Ugh. never lose Tetris. That's the last way my mind one, thinks. My mind thinks like Tetris. Yeah, last one would be... Call of Duty. Oh, wait. No, I have two more. Okay. Call of Duty. Yeah. Because I love it. Yeah. It's amazing and you don't like yeah. it, but that's okay. And The Division. Oh, Division's good. Division's good. I thought mm-hmm. you were going to say Far Cry. <gasps> How did I forget that one? <laughs> yes, Far Cry, but the one with John Seed. Yeah. Do you like Far Cry 5? Five? 5, yes. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. You like Far Cry 5. And all all good games. I'm okay. Division's a good game. Far Cry's a good game. We like games that we can play together cooperatively. Uh, what was the one you said before that? The is Division? It, Call it, of Duty. Oh, yeah. I don't like... So I Warzone's okay. I don't like games that don't punish you for losing. That's what it is. I don't like a game where you can die 37 times and you just keep coming back. I like to get my my KD down. That's my goal. I mean, if you play that way, it's, it's more fun. But I don't like that Like someone on your team can literally die 65 times and cost you... You, you really don't have a lot of... De- like, in a Call of Duty game... There's one guy at the top who gets 40 kills and one guy at the bottom who dies 40 times. Yeah. And that's what determines who wins the game. Yeah. Everything in the middle is just canceling itself out. Mm-hmm. My favorite games of all time are, I'd say, Zelda games. Okay. 2D Zelda games I enjoy. I also like the 3D ones. But like I'm playing uh, the, the one that came out on Game Boy Advance. Yes. The Minish Cap. I started that one. I've had fun with that one. Uh, Breath of the Wild is my favorite game of all time tony hawk games i love skateboarding games you do i miss that there's not like a a, a new tony hawk game every um like year. every month now i mean every month every year <laughs> every year nba jam i like i used to like blitz and jam those like arcade i don't love like as a kid i played like nba 2k and nba live and madden but like i don't love simulation games as an adult i want like over the top yeah like fun for basketball and there's those don't exist anymore sea of thieves though sea of thieves is a game and i knew i knew that was the look i was going to get when i mentioned sea of thieves and i haven't played it in a while because i don't have anybody to play it with because it is a game okay no 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 i will play sea of thieves with you but you turn into fucking the devil it's not, I turn into a captain of a ship. And we're going to fight, and it's not going to be like a little fight. Like, you, I might kill you. But, but because you get so fucking serious. So I'm a competitive about it. person. I know. That's what I love about you. I love it. I love that about but you. But that game is but in literally that game, based on. I play that game knowing, like, okay. But the there fight. is no are other way to play trouble? that game. Like, are we going to get into a fight tonight? And then you just want to keep on going. And I'm like, no, let's stop. We All turn right, in the so treasure. Me, We're good. Let's stop here. Let me walk back what I said then. I have nobody to play with that is as competitive and worried about sinking other ships. <laughs> but isn't that am. also the fact, like, I try. I, I can kill people in Call of Duty, but in Sea of Thieves. I shoot them and they don't die. But that's but that's why I tell you I don't like Call of Duty because it's designed for everybody to get a certain amount of kills. See if these you got a uh, beautiful gotta, game. You got a beautiful kill people. game. I don't mind playing it for fun. Uh, I got Ratchet and Clank on here. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Pokemon games. I have Goldeneye and I have Fortnite. You left oh, Fortnite off your list. I do like Fortnite. I like to play that with you. I like to play it with yeah. myself, with the family. Fortnite's a, like Fortnite, while it gets a bad <laughs> reputation, Fortnite is a fun game. Do you remember the first time that I ever played Fortnite? Yes, I do. <laughs> you were bad. <laughs> you're like, shoot them, Lord. And I'm like, I am shooting them. I am. And you're You've like, gotten way no. better. I will say, you're you're like, you're a solid Fortnite teammate. I like it. I'm good. And I can shoot especially people. Especially when we play. We like to play on the Switch, because that's where all the bombs yeah. play. Yep. Uh, but yeah, now that's, that's, so this, we'll start going into, I think next week we'll do, uh, 
our favorite co-op games. Okay, that should be fun. And, and then, then we'll, you know, we go through games we're looking forward to and stuff like that. But this will turn into a little bit of a... I, I want, I've always like, we did a video game show at one point, yeah. but it, we're just not that like the, the like whole idea hardcore of this, gamers. The, but the whole idea of this channel is to be like the casual, right? The, the casual well, I'd like gaming. to know like what other people's favorite games exactly. are. Cause there like, might be something I want to check out. Exactly. I want this show as we kind of, you know, we're, we're going to go into our bonus topic in a minute, but I want this show to become more of a conversation with like ideas thrown out mm -hmm. people chiming in and saying things and yeah. less about having to listen we i just want to jump start the conversations and then yes sir get it to that all right last topic bonus topic of the week instead of doing a draft this week lauren i thought it would be more fun if um i'm gonna give you a list of items and i want you to tell me if they're overrated or if they're underrated, and then I will argue against you probably on 90%. I'll either agree, and if we agree, look, it'll show our compatibility. And if it doesn't, I'll probably argue with you. Okay, so this week's topic here. Okay. Overrated, underrated, breakfast cereals. Oh, I like cereal. Okay. <laughs> I like Let's cereal. start off, number one, tried and true, frosted flakes. Are they overrated or underrated? And there's no, to, to preface this, there is no... <clears throat> you can't say like they're appropriately rated. It's either they're over overrated. or under. They're overrated. Overrated. Give me, I mean, why? Well, I mean, because they're just, it's just, they just taste like sugar. That there's, is true. There's no other flavor profile to them. They're just sugar, crunchy sugar. So I, I will say from a taste standpoint, they're amazing. Yeah. But I will say every time I eat a bowl of Frosted Flakes, I think I have diabetes. <laughs> Post post bowl, like I'm yeah. shaky. I don't feel right. Like the amount I mean, of sugar it just hit me like that. It would be like, it would be interesting to see. Like I don't. I'm just saying that. But that cereal out of all of them is the one that like I feel the sugar content. So I'm gonna go. I will go with you and ride with you on all overrated. Right. But while their taste, they do taste amazing. I like but, them. But I do think that like if from, I don't go to the store and just be like, oh, I just really want some. Agree. Frosted flakes I will eat right frosted now. flakes if someone has bought in frosted flakes. But I'm not like. And a lot of times, like if you go to like a diner, like when you're on vacation yeah. and you're getting breakfast Ooh. and you don't trust like the cook making eggs, you go, let me get some or like a continental breakfast, and they have the. I'll grab some frosted yeah, flakes. Yeah, it's tried and true. You know what it yeah, is. Yeah, you. It's it's safe. All right, Cheerios. Now, when I say Cheerios. I'm giving you the regular, the honey nut, and the frosted. Oh, just like Cheerios in general? Just, like, just Cheerios in general. Is it like Are blueberry they, Cheerios, strawberry Cheerios, I guess like you any could type go, of like, Cheerio? I've never even gone that far down the Cheerio rabbit hole, but I, I know the regular, I know the honey nut, and I know the frosted, and I know they're all garbage. They're underrated. They're overrated. They're underrated. A honey nut Cheerio? Mm. Blueberry Cheerios? Mm. Cheerios and there's like cinnamon sugar Cheerios. Mm. No, there's so Cheerios, many different Cheerios. Cheerios are nasty. They taste like cardboard. No, they're delicious. I love them. I mean, that's why you understand that there's a tail, like a telltale thing here. When they have to start creating so many different flavors or something, it's because the original tastes like shit. It's because so they're like, people love how them can we make, so much. How can we make shit taste better? We'll put some blueberry on it. Put some strawberry on it. Puts a, and I get they're like good they're for heart your heart. healthy. Well, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. When you add all that sugar, are they still heart healthy, mm -hmm. or is it just the honey nut and the Ooh, the, the regular ones? The hot goals yummy. Number three, Lucky Charms. Underrated. I mean, wait, Under over overrated, overrated, overrated. Yeah, because only good part of that is the marshmallow. Ooh, I don't think I agree. The actual cereal part tastes like shit. But I think it's the combination. I think they complement each other well. Yeah. If you just pick out the marshmallows, it's not doing anything for you. And if you just pick out the uh, the little crunchy pieces, you're a psychopath. But if you eat them, <laughs> yeah, if, you just, if you eat them in conjunction, nobody's out here just going through a bag of. Uh, so, do you want to know why I never buy Lucky Charms in our house? Because our kids eat only the the marshmallows, and I'm left with a fucking bag of, of those the, nasty that has ass to be thrown away. I agree. Cereal parts, but the proper way to eat a Lucky Charm is with milk and and a balanced scoop. Well, if you want to go into, you know, why they got to add those marshmallows in there? Because the cereal itself tastes like shit. That's not a lie. You're not lying. But I think it's it's a good compromise. Uh, what do we got here? Cocoa Puffs. Underrated. Underrated. I'm Delicious. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Ooh. Underrated. Underrated as well. 
There's nothing that tastes like a cinnamon oh. toast crunch. I like cinnamon toast crunch dry though. I like cinnamon toast crunch with anything. When you put it in milk, all this you just get cinnamon milk with like crunchy squares. Oh, I got one for you. Which is okay, but it's not what I want. Golden grams. Bro, I have a list. Okay, can I'm we, sorry. I'm can we sorry. work off the list here? <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> You're excited. Fruit Loops, overrated. Um Fruit Loops are garbage, man. I like Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops but are garbage. I could I could agree with you on there cuz I don't just like, oh man, I really need some Fruit Frosted Loops. Frosted mini wheats. Ooh, underrated. Underrated. I love me some frosted me mini wheat. And they got fiber. Yeah, they're good for you and they taste delicious. Apple Jacks. Underrated. Uh, yeah, underrated. This is There what, is nothing that tastes like an apple jack. They're way better than a Cheerio. Okay, if you're I'll going give in, you that. so if you're going if you're ranking round circle cereals. Okay. Apple Jacks is number 1. Fruit Loops and Cheerios are at the bottom of that list. Yeah. Uh Frost we already had that one. Rice Krispies. Okay. I know where you're going. I knew. Okay, so is this rice, like the plain dry, this just is like rice regular rice crispy. But I knew, like this was baiting for a story from you. Okay, so there was rice crispy treat cereal, but the, the original ones used to have the actual like rice crispy treats in so them. Wait, hold the on, clusters. stop. Because you, what you're saying, you're correct. Right now, there's rice krispies. They're not rice crispy treats. Yeah. Rice crispy treats. What you make? There was a cereal that was called rice crispy treats. Yes, cereal. That was amazing. Yes. But Rice Krispies, overrated. Yes. Disgusting. They're just trash cereal. Rice, like crispy rice. They're the inside of a crunch bar. Trash cereal. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you. Fruity Pebbles slash Cocoa Pebbles. Oh, those are definitely underrated. They are fucking amazing. Anything that is Fruity Pebble flavored is delicious. I'm, I'm going time out you. I'm talking about you. They're overrated. No, they're not. They're overrated. No, they're not. They're overrated. Let me why would there you. be a candy bar? There are like protein so, powders, you why? creamers. I'll explain to you why that happened. Because right. someone fucked up in like the taste lab and created it and they were like, put it in everything. But I'm going to tell you why Fruity Pebbles are overrated. It has nothing to do with taste. It has everything to do with the amount of anxiety they give you. The fuck anxiety do the they give you? The minute you pour a bowl of Fruity Pebbles. Uh-huh. And you pour that milk into the bowl. Yeah. You are on a fucking clock. There's a simple. They sogify so fast. Well, there's a simple solution to that. What is that? You eat a smaller bowl and then just refill your bowl. No. Duh. No. I To me, they're overrated because of they have no longevity. What did you you put them in something the other day and they got soggy. You put them on a cake. <laughs> You thought you were going to be cute and you sprinkled them on a cake. I made you a cake and, they and got I was soggy. so proud of myself. And because then Fruity Pebbles have no I, lifespan. Yeah. I added Fruity Pebbles and then I was like, damn, it's going to be so good. And yeah. I'm saying, taste wise, if this is strictly based on taste, 100%, they're top of the list, one of the best cereals. But you have to go in there and there's an element of like longevity and lifespan and they're just not giving it to you. I didn't think of that, but yeah. Okay. Captain Crunch. Underrated. With or without crunch berries. Underrated. Delicious. Overrated. No. You have a horrible, horrible. I don't though. The, the, here's profiles. the problem. The problem for you is that you're strictly going off of taste every time. Well, what the fuck else is there to go off of? Aggressiveness. You're the only weirdo that I know. No, I'm not. That Kylie says, says the same Captain thing. Crunch and my dad says chops the same up your thing. Mouth. Well, then y'all got some pussy ass mouths. Hold on. I want anybody who listens to this. Captain Crunch destroys the top of your mouth. No, it doesn't. It is a great. I leave with blood and I come out of Captain Crunch like I was in a fight. Well, you got a bitch ass mouth. No, then. I think I have a <laughs> scar on the top of my mouth from Captain Crunch. That uh, like one of the the fights I didn't win. No, I just straight up throw that shit in my mouth no, dry and just it, crunch like, it. It is literally once again one of the best tasting crunch cereals. Crunch berries, delicious. But I don't. I'm not. I go Captain Crunch without Crunch berries. It's good either way. Peanut butter Captain Crunch. I even got some peanut butter Captain Crunch bars downstairs that I'm glad none of you motherfuckers like because then I get to eat them. Cookie crisp. Cookie crisp. Mm, I'm going to go overrated. Overrated because they changed it. Yeah, they they're not anybody. the same. So when we were kids, cookie crisp was would have been my number one. I ate it all the time. It was fucking amazing. It tasted like little cookies. At some point in time, somebody mm -hmm. figured out that whatever was in yeah. a cookie crisp was extremely bad for you. 
Mm-hmm. And they they subtly switched it to like a different formula. They taste like cardboard now. They're terrible. They're, they're terrible now. They're, they're not the same. There's a nostalgia, but they're overrated because they're not what they used to be. Yeah. Pops. Pop, no, it can't go anywhere with my pops. Mm, I don't know how I feel about that one. Underrated. Okay. Underrated. I don't know. Underrated. It's a cereal that gets no love. Nobody talks about it. Nobody's pulling it off the shelf. But you can't tell me when you crack open that six pack. Yeah. That six Underrated. pack. That it's you're good. not trying to get to the pops before everybody else. Yeah. Do you remember that commercial where gotta the guy got at my pops and they like go to the vending machine? Yes. And he can't get in. The guy's like, I got this. And yes. Boom, boom. I do remember that. But I'm saying pops underrated. Last one. You ready? Yeah. Golden grams. Golden grams. Here's your golden Underrated. Grams. Underrated. <sighs> I, they're good uh, overrated no there's if there's a overrated. nothing that tastes like it it's amazing it's so delicious i'm not a fan i'm just not a fan like the, what is, what are they flavored honey delicious but they have they got it like what is a golden gra- it's graham cracker and honey so they're fucking graham crackers they're squ- crunched up graham crackers and milk Ooh, what's i'll that? just take a pack what's that of one called that honey made raisin bran crunch oh that one's good but I, I tried to stay underrated. away i stayed away from like old people no <laughs> no not old people but like super specific like raisin bran with this and this and this i went with like regular raisin brand's here. pretty good though too it's i didn't right. like it as a kid but it's i like right. it now as an adult right. that is all the time we have this week for the show make sure to tell a friend to tell a friend to listen and subscribe to this week's episode make sure to tune in to the nerdy d show every week as well as tune into the casual wrestling show on the same channel here uh, where we talk about all kinds of different wrestling topics and we want your guys opinions so leave comments and all of that good stuff as always i am the notorious nerdy d that is level up lauren and you can ring the final bell